graders, we have reached the last lesson in Chapter 2 in our course reading textbook. And this is lesson 210. I can express numbers in scientific notation. Earlier in the year, someone asked me, Ms. Numerous, it's not scientific notation. Does that mean scientists use it? And I said, you know what? We're going to have to wait and find out. And I think when we get into our book and we talk a little bit more in class after this video, you'll find out that yes, they do. So we're on page 130 in our textbook if you're following along. Open up to there. Make sure you have two things you've learned, one thing you still are wondering when we have a discussion in class. So scientific notation. Notice it's a vocabulary word. Scientific notation is a compact way of writing numbers with absolute values that are very large or very small. If you were talking about how far away a planet is from Earth, yes, we would probably use scientific notation because that would be a very, very large number. If you were talking about maybe the size of an atom or something in science that is very, very small, you could also use this. Know that the word compact means to, con to condense, okay? So scientific notation is a way of writing numbers very large or very small. So a factor greater than or equal to 1 but less than 10. The front number in scientific notation has to fall in that category. This number has to be more than 1 but has to be less than 10. So it has to be a digit 1.0 to 9.9 something. Okay? It cannot go into two digits past the one place. And then it has a power to the power of 10 for an exponential form. The exponent can be either positive or negative. That will tell you which way to move your decimal point or which way to multiply. Because we did learn in the last lesson that this 10 to the negative fourth is actually 1 over 10 to the fourth. So we should know that this 8 to 7 tenths is actually going to be a smaller number than 8 because we're actually dividing by 10 four times. So, scientific notation to standard form. Standard form would mean like you have the numbers written out as a whole number with no exponents and no multiplication. So, when you multiply by a positive number of 10, um, you move the decimal to the right. If you multiply by a negative power of 10, you move the decimal to the left, which makes sense because on a number line, our positives are to the right and our negatives are to the left. So, that shouldn't be too hard for us to understand. Okay, so that's just reminding us about our decimal system. The number of places the decimal point moves is the absolute value of the exponent. So if it's negative 4, I'm going to move it negative, I'm going to move it 4 places, but the negative tells me to the left. Okay? So it's still the same numerical value, and the negative or the positive tells us left or right. So if I were to express the number in standard form, if I was shown 5 and 34 hundredths times 10 to the fourth power, and I want to write that in standard form, what I do is I simply move the decimal four places to the right. How do you know to move it to the right, Ms. Simmers? Well, since that four is a positive, and positive numbers go to the right, that's how I know it goes one, two, three, four places to the right of that decimal currently. For example, two, three and 27 hundredths times 10 to the negative third that's really like dividing by 10 three times. Hopefully we know that division moves our decimal place three places to the left. It's like that negative three, but if we don't know that, that's okay. We will learn, and we know that that negative in front of the three tells us to move the de uh, decimal three to the left instead of to the right. To end up with a um, number much smaller than three. So pretty simple, just moving left and right. If you want to give A, B, and C a try here, I'm going to get a different color out. So I have 7 and 42 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. So what that 5 tells me is how many places to move the decimal. The fact that it's positive tells me which direction. So I move it 5 places to the right. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, please excuse my pen writing here. And I'm going to fill in now zeros by a uh, three zeros filled in by 742,000 is the same as 74200 times 10 to the fifth power. Now I have six and one tenth times 10 to the second to the negative second power. That means I'm going to move it two places, and that negative 
tells me that I'm going to move it to the left. When I go one and two, and I fill in with those zeros. Please, 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 please do not forget that zero in the ones place. We would never write something with just a decimal and then numbers behind it. Okay? We need to know what's in front of that decimal and the zero is in front in that one place. So do not forget that. Three and seven hundred and fourteen thousandths times ten to the second. Two tells me how many places to move the decimal. A positive tells me to move it to the right. So that's three and seven hundred and fourteen thousandths. Moving it two places to the right gives me three hundred seventy one and four tenths is equivalent to that. Hopefully we're on the right track so far. This isn't too bad. It's just pretty much positive, negative, left and right. Um, and how many times move the decimal? Um, the hard part for you guys is to go from standard form, from writing a number, and then putting it into scientific notation. Um, so here are some steps to help you remember. And if you're following along, send 131 in your textbook. To write a number in scientific notation, you follow these steps. So first, you move the decimal point to the right of the first non-zero digit. So meaning if I had a number that was 1, between 1 and 9, which are digits, it's going to go to the right of that one number. You're going to count the number of places you move the decimal, and that's going to be your exponent value. Uh, and then you're going to find the power of 10. If the absolute value of the original number was between 0 and 1, the exponent's negative, otherwise the exponent's positive. This, I think, rule is a little tricky, so kind of keep that in mind, but Follow along and um, see if that can make more sense in different words for you. So the decimal on a whole number is at the back of a number here. But think about which direction you would move that number to keep going. Okay, so hopefully you realize the decimal does go at the end of the number here. Um, and to get it where we want it to go is to the right of the first non-zero number. So these are all zeros, so it can't go to the right of those. The first number, since we read left to right, is actually 3. So we need that decimal to go right here where that comma is. So let's count how many places we'd have to move that. We move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 places to the left. So I'm going to rewrite my number, 3 and 725 thousandths, and I'm going to write it times 10. But now we need to decide what the power is going to be. Because we're trying to write this scientific notation to be a number that's equivalent to um, 3,725,000. So in this rule here that was kind of confusing, it said that if the number was between 0 and 1, it's going to be negative. Well, this original number is far more than 1, so it's going to be positive. But another way to know that it's going to be positive is to get it back to its original, we'd have to move that decimal back to the right, so the opposite of moving it to the left. So we'd know that it's actually going to be a positive 6. Because if we want to get back to that 3 million, we'd have to move it 6 to the right. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more how to move those numbers. Um, so here, if I was going to write um, this number in scientific notation, I need to move it to the right of the first non-zero numbers. Well, we have full of zeros here, and I want to get it behind that 3. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right, which sound was positive. But it's really like multiplying it by this um, 1 ten thousand. So that's really 10 divided by itself four times. So it's going to be to the negative 4 because to get it back to that number, I'd have to move it 4 to the left. Okay? And I may just kind of get rid of this too and see what's below here. I kind of wrote over some book examples just to give you my kind of take on it. Um, so the same thing would apply on this one as well. Okay? Um, so try D, E, and F on your own and then come back and see what I say. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. So we're going to write these numbers in scientific notation. Please remember on these whole numbers, the decimal is at the end on the right. And I want to get it behind the first non zero, which is this one here. So I count the places 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. Hopefully that's right because it's kind of very hard to write with. So we got a number 1 and 414 thousandths. 
that is messy. I'm going to redo that one. Be a little bit more careful. Times 10 to the what power? Well, since this number was way more than 1 to start with, that means x1 is going to be positive because I have to go back to the right. So it's going to be to a positive 7. Here, I need to move my exponent in between 8 and 7 because that number is the first non-zero and that puts it in the scientific notation rule where that number has to be between 1 and 10. So I really moved it 1, 2, 3 times to the right. Since I moved it to the right, it's kind of like that backwards thinking, to move it back, like when we solve equations, to do the opposite, I need to move it 3 to the left, so it's going to be 10 to the negative third. And I can also know that because the number I started with was far less than 1. Uh, again, I just need to move this one in one place to be 1 and 14 hundredths. And since I move it to the left, that means I'm going to need to move it. I, need, I moved it to the right, I'm going to need to move it to the left to go backwards. So this is really 10 to the negative first power. And that's an x. Sorry again for the pen. Hopefully I don't have to do any more videos like this. All right, remember now that um, if this concept was difficult for you or if you need the help, you can rewatch the video. You can read examples in the book. Uh, check out personal tutors or check out some of the other math teachers in the building to help you out. Uh, do your best. Remember the two, one, two things you learn, one thing you need to um, work on. And bring your notes to class. We'll see you then.